these protons travel along bipolar field lines from the gravitational center toward the object. Yet those photons tra traveling along bent field lines in this dipolar field can be thought to be projected on the straight line that links the charged gravitational center and the object. The object catches these photons and re-emits them immediately. Then the photons travel back to the charged gravitational center where they are catched and re-emitted likewise. After this second re-emission the process repeats. The photons themselves, or better to say the whole photon field, since there are many, are disturbances in the space-time continuum which consists of periodic small time dilation and Lorentz contraction effects traveling like a wave through the continuum. The bouncing back and force of these photons thus creates an association between the charged gravitational center and the object, which is identical with the force. Since the electromagnetic wave has a reality, which means that the wave vector pointing from the direction of the photon propagation to the location of the disturbance in the space-time continuum rotates either clockwise or anticlockwise around that direction of propagation, the electromagnetic interaction force can either be attractive or repulsive. The force is attractive when the photons being sent out from the charged gravitational center have the opposite chirality than the photons sent out from the object, then since in this case the oppositely traveling Photons engage each other maximally, thus pulling the spirals of chirality tightly together. In the case that the photons being sent out have the same chirality, they virtually decouple and the spirals of chirality act comparable with compressed spiral springs which drive the charged gravitational center and the object apart from each other. Depending on the kind of chirality, the charged gravitational center and the object are sending out, they are denoted as positive or negative charged. The photon field has another important uh, property. When the photons in the field come very close to each other, the time dilation and Lorentz contraction effects of which they consist of have the tendency to cluster together. 
This creates a force in the photon field itself that distracts a photon from flying straight on and instead forces it into an orbit around the clustered other photons. Thus an entity emerges that consists of photons orbiting each other the radius of this rotating object is ever shrinking until it has reached the size of a very small point. This entity is then called an elementary particle. It is not easy to shift uh, the location of such an elementary particle since such a shift requires the shift of all the space-time fluctuations involved to another place. Hence the elementary particle has a natural resistance to its replacement. This resistance or inertia force is called the gravitational force of the object. When two objects come close to each other, there is still the tendency that both objects would like to cluster together like sticky meatballs in a bowl of a kitchen. Therefore, the gravitational force between the two objects is always attractive regardless of the charge they have. The gravitational force is still there when one or both of the objects are uncharged since being uncharged simply means that two oppositely charged particles orbit each other very closely, whereby the absolute value of the both charges is identical. This gravitational force, like the electromagnetic force, can also be described with a field consisting of exchanged quantums which are called gravitons in this case. These gravitons however have the quality that they never can repulse each other. We now return to the discussion of the object with mass M0 on which the observer travels. In all, this object can be understood as an entity of many particles, in all of which photons are orbiting each other. Since the velocity of these photons is always the light velocity c, they contribute with a value m0 times c squared half to the balance of the dynamical energies, or in terms m0 over 2 times r dot squared plus e of r is equal to m0 halves v total squared minus m0 halves c squared. Here the term m0 c squared half is subtracted from m0 v total squared half since this <coughs> energy amount is not available to be fed into an increase of the kinetic energy m0 r dot squared halves of the object. 